Finally, our last type of tissue uh, of the four primary tissue types is connective tissue. We saved this one for last because it tends to be a little bit complicated. So let's see if we can clarify a couple of things here. What does all connective tissue have in common? All connective tissue has a matrix and it has cells embedded in that matrix. Okay, so it's kind of like cells that live in um, a, a, a network around them. The network tends to have protein fibers spread throughout it. Um, but we're going to see a lot of different variations on that general theme. So lots of different examples. There are actually four subtypes of connective tissue. So we'll take a look at each of these. Let's start with connective tissue proper. Connective tissue proper is composed of, okay, we've got a sort of like a, a gel-like ground substance that has protein fibers embedded in it. And then on top of that, there are cells living in this matrix. Um, so let me just show a picture. We can look at a picture together of dense connective tissue. This is a great example of what, um, what tendons and ligaments would look like. So if you look at this, notice how you can see sort of like fibers running this way and they're all aligned together. It's a very densely packed structure. And these collagen fibers are giving a lot of strength. So if you pull horizontally, if you were to pull on this structure, it's not going to do much of anything. Those fibers are very strong and they would re resist deformation. So that's a very strong structure. We could also have um, dense irregular. So instead of the fibers running parallel, they could be arranged maybe in in different directions, and that's not gonna be quite as good at resisting forces, but it will still be very protective. That that's the type of connective tissue that tends to form sort of like a, a sheath around organs. Think if you've ever cut up, I don't know, chicken breast or something, that clear layer that's on the outside, uh, that's connective tissue that's sort of just protecting um, everything underneath. We could also have loose connective tissue. This is a good example here in this picture. So you can see we do have protein fibers. The collagen fibers um, are these small red fibers. They're not necessarily packed together. They're kind of running every which way. And then there's also a lot of space in between them. That space is called ground substance. And there's lots of space for things like cells to live in this network. Uh, we've got some blood vessels that are running through. So it's a loose structure, loose connective tissue. Um, this is, um, for example, this is in skin. This is a supportive layer in the, sort of like the upper layer of the dermis, right beneath the keratinized layer that we looked at before. And then finally, another example would be adipose tissue. This is the tissue type that's specialized for storing fat. And the cells in this case are called adipocytes. The adipocytes live in this matrix. So that's connective tissue proper. Some examples of connective tissue proper. Again, what do they all have in common? They all have cells living in a extracellular matrix. Let's take a look at the next type, cartilage. And cartilage is found um, in joints. It provides a really good gliding surface. And interestingly, it also provides a template for bone formation. Initially, our skeletons are made of cartilage when we're babies, and then as the baby develops, um, it ends up developing into bone. So um, let's see here, that leads us to bone. Okay, what is bone? Bone is a very hardened network. Um, the cells, basically they trap minerals, mineral salts, and that ends up forming a very hard structure, it tends to form rings. Um, so if you look at the structure over here, the individual cells are these dark spots. I, I'm, I'm trying to figure out how to point to them. Right now my laser pointer is sitting right on top of one. Okay, let me move it. Okay, that dark spot right there, um, that is an osteocyte, that is a bone cell. And that cell is living in a tiny little space called a lacuna. So anyway, that's bone tissue. The matrix in this case is very hardened. Um, the cells are the osteocytes. Finally, our last example of connective tissue is blood. You might not have thought of blood as a tissue before, but it is. Um, it fits this basic definition. We have living cells that exist in some type of a matrix. In this case, the matrix is fluid. It's plasma. Um, but blood is a type of connective tissue.